Hello, 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 and uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm Mrs. Birdie, and I, today I'm going to be talking to you about Inktober. Uh, if you haven't heard about Inktober, uh, it is a month-long art challenge that many artists choose to do to um, try and improve their art skills uh, by drawing every single day in pen. Um, this is created by the artist Jake Parker uh, quite a while ago, and um, he also creates an official prompt list. So his prompt list, if you look up inktober.com, you'll find his, ink his prompt list. Um, but I've taken it a little step further because I was trying to think of an idea and I wanted to end up coming up with a couple different concepts here <clears throat> um, along with the Inktober, um, you know, concept. So like every day he gives a prompt word like poisonous, tranquil, roasted, spell, chicken, drooling. Okay. So these are all um, prompts from this year. So uh, I decided to take a, a step further and focus on fairy tales. So um, the first was poisonous, so I chose to do um, Snow White. Um, I did end up using a couple of other things in here. I used a Copic marker um, as well as a white jelly roll pen to complete this drawing. <clears throat> In this one, I also used the jelly roll, and then um, I got these really cool clay color um, marker pens um, in, they're like water-based. Um, I got these in Japan. <clears throat> so really fun to play with, um, and I really have been enjoying those, so that's what I colored those red in with. Um, and it's also what I've used here on my Hansel and Gretel roasted, um, uh, drawing. Um, this one was done really relatively quickly. I think I, if I had more time, I would have gone into more detail with this, but it's just during the week. And so I had to be a little bit faster. So it's not as polished as some of my other drawings. <clears throat> um, for this day it was spell and so I did um, the frog prince um, I chose to do the glass frog because like I mean honestly they have like the coolest eyes ever um, and then the next prompt was chicken and I really honestly was struggling to try and think of a fairy tale that was chicken related um, and then I found the fairy tale about the death of the little hen which is basically about a rooster and a hen going up to a hill and the hen chokes on a nut because she tries to swallow something that's too big for her throat and she dies and the rooster is going to go uh, have a funeral for her and some mice decide to pull their carriage and all these animals um, start to hop onto the back to join the procession and then they all drown in a river. Um, I don't know what moral <laughs> of a story this fairy tale is talking about, but I found it uh, extremely grim as far as a grim fairy tale. <clears throat> so today I will be working blank pages um today I will be working on drooling and so I'm going to go with the concept of the um little red riding hood and having a drooling um wolf on top there um and since I think it'll be fun to tell you more about the story uh I am going to go ahead and draw, and then I'm gonna have a voiceover of the story. So, hope you enjoy this uh, speed drawing. This is the story of Little Red Cap by Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm. 
Once upon a time, there was a sweet little girl. Everyone who saw her liked her, but most of all her grandmother, who did not know what to give the child next. Once she gave her a little cap made of red velvet, because it suited her so well and she wanted to wear it all the time. She came to be known as Little Red Cap. One day, her mother said to her, Come, Little Red Cap, here is a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Take them to your grandmother. She is sick and weak, and they will do her well. Mind your manners and give her my greeting. Behave yourself on the way. Do not leave the path, or you might fall down and break the glass, and then there will be nothing for your grandmother. And when you enter her parlor, don't forget to say good morning, and don't peer into all the corners first. I'll do everything just right, said Little Red Cap, shaking her mother's hand. The grandmother lived out in the woods, a half an hour from the village. When Little Red Cap entered the woods, a wolf came up to her. She did not know what a wicked animal he was, and was afraid of him, was not afraid of him. Good day to you, Little Red Cap. Thank you, Wolf. Where are you going so early, Little Red Cap? To grandmother's. And what are you carrying under your apron? Grandmother is sick and weak, and I am taking her some cake and wine. We baked yesterday, and they should be good for her and give her strength. Little Red Cap, where does your grandmother live? Her house is a good quarter hour from here in the woods, under three large oak trees. There's a hedge of hazel bushes there. You must know the place, said Little Red Cap. The wolf thought to himself, now that sweet young thing is a tasty bite for me. She will taste even better than the old woman. You must be sly and you can catch them both. He walked along a little while, while with Little Red Cap then said, Little Red Cap, just look at the beautiful flowers that are all around us. Why don't you go and take a look? And I don't believe you can hear how beautifully the birds are singing. You're walking along as though you were on your way to school. It's very beautiful in the woods. Little Red Cap opened her eyes, and when she saw the sunbeams dancing to and fro through the trees and how the ground was covered with beautiful flowers, she thought, If I take a fresh bouquet okay to my grandmother, she'll be very pleased. Anyway, it's still early, and I'll be home on time. And she ran off the path into the woods, looking for flowers. Each time she picked one, she thought that she could see an even more beautiful one a little way off, and she ran after it, going further and further into the woods. But the wolf ran straight to her grandmother's house and knocked on the door. Who's there? Little Red Cap, I'm bringing you some cake and wine. Open the door. Just press the latch, called out the grandmother. I'm too weak to get up. The wolf pressed the latch and the door opened. He stepped inside, went straight to the grandmother's bed, and ate her up. Then he put on her clothes, put her cap on his head, got into her bed, and pulled the curtains shut. Little Red Cap had run after the flowers, and she gathered so many that she could not carry any more. She remembered her grandmother and then continued on her way to her house. She found, to her surprise, that the door was open. She walked into the parlor, and everything looked so strange, and then she thought, Oh my God, why am I so afraid? I usually like it at my grandmother's. She called out, Good morning, but received no answer. Then she went to the bed and pulled back the curtains, and Grandmother was lying there with her cap pulled down over her face and looking very strange. Oh, Grandmother, what big ears you have! All the better to hear you with. Oh, Grandmother, what big eyes you have! All the better to see you with. Oh, Grandmother, what big hands you have all the better to grab you with oh grandmother what a horribly big mouth you have all the better to eat you with the wolf had scarcely finished speaking when he jumped from the bed with a single leap and ate up poor little red cap as soon as the wolf had satisfied his desires he climbed back into bed fell asleep and began to snore very loudly a huntsman was just passing by. He thought, 
The old woman is snoring so loudly. You'd better see if something is wrong with her. He stepped into the parlor, and when he approached the bed, he saw the wolf lying there. So here I find you, you old sinner, he said. I've been hunting for you for a long time. He was about to aim his rifle when it occurred to him that the wolf might have eaten the grandmother and that she might still be rescued. So instead of shooting, he took a pair of scissors and began to cut open the wolf's belly. After a few cuts, he saw the red cap shining through, and after a few more cuts, the girl jumped out crying. Oh, I was so frightened! It was so dark inside the wolf's body! And then the grandmother came out as well, alive but hardly able to breathe. Little Then, Little Red Cap fetched some large stones. She filled the wolf's body with them, and when he woke up and tried to run away, the stones were so heavy that he immediately fell down dead. The three of them were happy. The huntsman skinned the wolf and went home with the pelt. The grandmother ate the cake and drank the wine that Little Red Cap had brought, and the Little Red Cap thought, as long as I live, I will never leave the path and run off into the woods by myself if my mother tells me not to. They also tell how Little Red Cap was taking some baked things to her grandmother's another time when another wolf spoke to her and wanted her to leave the path. But Little Red Cap took care and went straight to grandmother's. She told her that she had seen the wolf, and that he had wished her a good day, but had stared at her in a wicked manner. If we hadn't been on a public road, he would have eaten me up, she said. Come, said Grandmother, let's walk, lock the door so he can't get in. Soon afterward, the wolf knocked on the door and called out, Open up, Grandmother, it's a little red cat, and I'm bringing you some baked things. He remained silent and did not open the door. Greyhead crept around the house several times and finally jumped onto the roof. He wanted to wait until Little Redcap went home that evening and then follow her and eat her up in the darkness. But the grandmother saw what he was up to. There was a large stone trough in front of the house. Fetch a bucket, Little Redcaps, she said to the child. Yesterday I cooked some sausage. Carry the water that I boiled them with to the trough. Little Red Cap carried water until the large, large trough was clearly full. The smell of sausage arose into the wolf's nose. He sniffed and looked down, stretching his neck so long that he could not no longer hold himself, and he began to slide. He slid off the roof, fell into the trough, and drowned. And Little Red Cap returned home happily, and no one harmed her. That was the story of the Little Red Cap. Perhaps it's a little different from what you've heard before. I hope that you enjoyed my Inktober drawing and my reading of a grim fairy tale. Thank you. Bye-bye.